thank you for coming, George. And thank you for having me today. <laughs> the stocks are rising on the uh, and the commodities rise on China's stimulus, yes. the bets, and copper is increasing. Yes, you it are has. the expert on commodities. Can you tell us a little bit why we are seeing this kind of trend today? Well, I think we're seeing the more of the downgrades that we have seen. Uh, these downgrades that have uh, uh, touched nine countries in Europe and uh, a number of uh, fears uh, that Italy may be next and yeah. then of course Greece is imminent. Uh, well all of that um, has increased the chances of having stimulus on two continents to bail out economies. And of course stimulus means stimulating the economy, which means purchasing of raw materials. Yes. And uh, one of the most important raw materials in any infrastructure buildup, of course, is copper. So you do expect those stimulus on two continents? Can yes, you in the, well, I, I expect stimulus in Europe. Mm -hmm. And I expect stimulus in the United States. Right. And then there will be a buildup in Japan hmm. after the tsunamis and after the storms and after all the terrible things that we've experienced this past year. There's going to be a lot of infrastructure buildup. Hmm. And that infrastructure buildup is going to be using a lot of copper. And of course, the automobile industries also uh, uh, seem to be uh, facing 11 years of old fleets. People yes. are starting to replace cars. That means the need for metals and especially copper. Hmm. How about China? What's China's role uh, in it? China. China, of course, has been buying copper and there have been uh, what we see canceled warrants, which means that warrants holding copper in the warehouses mm -hmm. uh, Copper is being exported and it's being sent to China and their infrastructure needs have been great. And so, yes, we are seeing a lot of use and a lot of business in copper. So let's go back to also gold. That's the, we yes. We're going to talk about gold. Of course, but gold is my favorite topic. <laughs> and gold is, um, I think, for the 5,000 years that we've experienced uh, maintaining purchasing power. I mean, just think in the depression in the 1930s, a kilo of gold bought you a new Ford, Chevy, or a Plymouth. Mm -hmm. Today, a kilo of gold, which is 32 ounces uh, at around $1,650, will buy you, again, a new Ford, a new Chevy and a very nice uh, Japanese car. But do we expect or should we expect to see a correction in gold? Gold has been a gold instrument last year. What do you think about 2012? Yes, and we've had big uh, corrections this past year. Every time we've had a margin uh, increase at the exchanges and these margin increases are necessary to make sure that all the participants uh, will do what they say they will do and uh, they'll be compelled uh, with cash to make sure that they buy what they are going to take delivery of mm -hmm. and deliver what they have sold. So these margin increases were necessary each time we've had about a $50 down move. Mm -hmm. Then we've had currency revaluations, right. uh, the Swiss revaluation of the currency mm -hmm. that took gold down for a little while. Um, then we've had uh, uh, the first inkling early in the year that Greece may default. Yes. At that time, gold went down $50 the first night because the thinking was that the central banks will have to sell gold in order to gain enough currency to bail out Greece, but that did not happen. So every time we've had these major sell-offs, mm -hmm. and there's always a reason for a major sell-off at some point, especially after a new high, <laughs> um, and it becomes a buying opportunity. Taking the current events into consideration, where do you see gold at, towards the end of 2012? Uh, for this year, I think gold is going to maintain uh, somewhere around these levels. Uh, probably if we don't have any new political problems, if we don't have any new major economic unforeseen problems, mm -hmm. um, the price of gold is an economic and political barometer. And so the price of gold right now is telling us that there is a problem in the world. It is $1,650, probably will stay here uh, and could go down in the short term to $1,600 or up to $1,700, $1,750. But in general, gold is going to maintain purchasing power and people are afraid of owning uh, currencies that may depreciate or may be printed more of mm -hmm. are going to maintain buying gold.
Talking about printing, how about the central banker's policy of buying? What do you think about this policy? Many uh, central banks have, buy, uh, have been buyers of gold uh, because they want to uh, keep underpinning uh, their currency. Hmm. And whatever their currency is, uh, they need to own some gold because the world looks to see what is beyond and underneath an issued currency. Hmm. And how about the demand from China, from India? Where do you see the demand? Well, um, uh, there, there are different types of demand. The jewelry demand in India has been uh, lagging because yes. sticker shock. Mm -hmm. uh, jewelry demand has been lagging also to some extent here. Um, because of the sticker shock, but then, of course, that helped uh, the other precious metals like silver. Silver is, was another <laughs> big instrument last year, 2011. Where do you see silver? Well, silver is a bridge between investment demand and industrial demand because silver is used up. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, gold actually is just goes from you to me at various prices, mm -hmm. depending on our view of the economic and political um, events. But silver is used in medical, is used in uh, technology, is used in uh, uh, television, is mm -hmm. used in uh, computers. So um, talking about silver, talking about gold, there is a discrepancy between the companies like gold mining companies and the uh, gold price itself. What, they're lagging behind the price. Well, Why yeah, do you because, see? Um, well, I don't really discuss securities. We have a fellow named Steve Walker at RBC. He does uh, the securities. But um, you have to remember that a mining company issues securities, and those securities are dependent upon management, uh, cost of extrusion, um, diesel, and uh, other costs have been going up in order to mine uh, product. Um, the, the cost of securing financing for these companies has not been cheap, even though we have low interest rates. And so there is a major difference uh, between owning the stock and owning the actual metal. I know you don't want to talk about the securities, but I want to ask you about this. George Soros and other big uh, investors like Paulson, they've been getting out of gold um, and they've been bearish. Not Do you necessarily. Share <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I know Mr. Soros and um, I think he's one of the most brilliant people. Uh, and I, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Paulson. And I'm not so sure that they get out of gold and stay out. I but think they sold. They sold 90 percent of their gold. And they may be coming Shit. back into it. Ah, I see. That's the key. Thank you so much for your Thank valuable you for comments. Me. And here, our time is up. Thank you very much.